Hey everyone, welcome to episode 29 of Off The Sprue. The year is almost at its end and so is this build. In this video I'll be uh, starting with the exterior of Academy's M113 Armored Personnel Carrier. We finally finished the uh, interior of the M113 and uh, it's time to move on to the exterior, the paint and the detailing. This is a short video and this one I'll be uh, looking at the following. First we'll be applying a primer coat. I'll then be uh, applying pre-shading consisting of black and white as well as a few colors. And finally I'll be applying a base coat. Before I get to that, a word from the sponsor. As you know by now, this build is sponsored by Zululand Hobbies here in South Africa. Check out their website, zululandhobbies.co.za. They uh, recently received a shipment, some very exciting 135 scale kits. There's some kits from Zazda as well as Academy. Uh, these will be on the website soon. I'm picking up the uh, story with the, uh, the primer coat applied. In this case, I used Vallejo's Matte Black Primer. It's my go-to primer for most projects. This has been applied to the, uh, to the hull, the exterior of the M113, as well as all the loose components, the road wheels, as well as the uh, commanders, a, a gun turret, uh, and a few of the other parts. I've covered this in a previous video, but you might ask me why am I using black? Black will certainly help us later on uh, to uh, add some shading to the, uh, to the paint job itself. And as I progress, you will see um, how this works out. Now I've spent so much time on the interior of this model that I really want to make sure that I get the exterior uh, as perfect as possible. And uh, because I'll be using a number of techniques, I, um, I made this mock-up uh, from sheet styrene of the side of the 113 and on this I practiced basically my, my paint job. Um, I really want to encourage you to, to do this, especially if you're using new techniques. Um, one spends so much time on these models that it's really a shame if you try something new and doesn't work out completely the way you want it. And uh, this is a safe way of uh, approaching your paint and uh, weathering work uh, in scale modeling. So this is what we're trying to achieve and uh, let's move on to the, uh, the first steps. The first thing to do after I apply the, uh, the primer coat is to give the uh, hull a sanding with a very, very fine uh, grit sander. This is just to get rid of some of the uh, unevenness uh, of, the, of the primer itself, little particles of dust and whatever is on the, on the hull itself. We want to start uh, painting on a clean surface, uh, smooth texture and uh, that is the purpose of the sanding. Once this is done, I can uh, start looking at my pre-shading colors. I'll be using white and black from Vallejo. I'll also be using two, um, two colors, the first being medium yellow and then orange. And as you'll see, these two colors will work out uh, very well later on uh, with, the, uh, with the orange Vietnam dust and uh, sort of rusty tones that we'll be adding during weathering. At this stage, it's also important to uh, make sure that the interior is properly covered. So I'll be closing up all the hatches. Uh, in this case, I'm using something similar to Bluetech that the, uh, my uh, US friends will know just to close the rear ramp. And I'm also using some foam just to cover up the, uh, the, the top hatches. When you do this, be careful not to damage any of the uh, interior detail. Now that this is done, I can start applying my first color for pre-shading. This is sometimes called black basing. I could call it pre-shading, whatever you want. Uh, basically, we're applying high contrast colors to, uh, to the sides and uh, to the outside of the 113. In this case, I first apply white. And basically, it's just applied with the airbrush in a mottled sort of a pattern, random pattern. Uh, I try to leave the edges of the, uh, of the surfaces um, black. So follow the outlines of the vehicle, uh, pay particular attention to, 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 to individual panels and uh, just uh, apply your, your paint accordingly. This of course is applied to the sides, the front, the, the top, not necessary for the, uh, the bottom of the vehicle that will be hidden. Uh, but lay down a good coat of uh, contrasting white on the uh, black primer coat. The same is also applied to all the loose components, the uh, commander's turret, 
as gun shields as well as the road wheels. In the case of the road wheels, I'm only applying a little bit of white in the uh, center section of every wheel. And this is the result. I'm certainly happy with this. I find that in most cases I need to go back and just uh, touch up the black again with uh, Vallejo Black just to make sure that uh, all the uh, panels and different surfaces are outlined. Having done this, I can now move on to the second color, that's medium yellow. And this is also applied with the airbrush into the center sections of the, uh, the white that we just applied. And it's done in the same manner, also a mottled sort of a, a pattern that we're following here, just applying uh, uh, yellow across the, uh, the white surfaces. This of course being the first step in the uh, color pre-shading that we'll also be adding to this uh, vehicle. I remember as a, as a young modeler, very much inexperienced, I would look at pictures of uh, master modelers' works. And I couldn't figure out how these guys managed to um, get these perfectly realistic uh, fin paint finishes uh, on their models. And, uh, and to a large extent, this is what those master modelers did. They applied their paints in layers, uh, applying their pre-shading, and this just gives it that nice, realistic, irregular, um, look that you find in the real world. This of course is also a uh, technique well known to aircraft modelers. And this is the result, the yellow and the white is uh, visible as well as the contrasting black. So we're well on our way to uh, completing the pre-shading for this uh, project. Guys also remember the rear ramp, you have to paint the inside as well. The ramp will be uh, open in the final model. So I apply the same colors to the inside of the ramp and also make sure that you tape up the, uh, the interior to keep any paint from uh, going inside and ruining all that work. Of course here I'm using my Iwata Eclipse uh, airbrush. It uh, excels at detail work. For the pre-shading I use the Iwata and later on you'll see I'll use my new uh, Supernova Studio Ninja airbrush. The second color that we're going to use is orange. And uh, this is also applied with the, uh, with the airbrush. And with the orange, I keep to the center sections of uh, the, lighter, the lighter areas with the yellow and the white, applying the, uh, the, the orange sparingly across the, uh, the, the yellow there. And the purpose being um, to help us later on, just to accentuate all the uh, Vietnam orange dust and uh, all the other weathering colors that we'll be applying. During long uh, airbrush spraying sessions, and if, especially if you're working with acrylics, you might notice that um, the paint starts to splatter. And this is usually when uh, paint started drying on the uh, tip of the airbrush needle. You can see there a little bit of orange uh, paint that uh, dried on the very tip there. This is easy to clean. Just use a cotton bud and some water or airbrush cleaner. And every now and then just make sure that you wipe the tip of the airbrush needle uh, very carefully. And... Uh, Right away you'll see that the, uh, the quality of the airbrush work uh, will start to improve. And there we go, this is the uh, result of the second color being applied. We've basically now completed all the, um, the pre-shading. We've laid down our colors and we can move on to the base coat uh, of the 113. As is the case with uh, most of my builds, I do a lot of research online, find as many pictures as I can of the uh, the subject that I'm building, in this case the 113, um, there's plenty of pictures uh, out there but they all date from the Vietnam War and uh, I've learned not to completely trust the color exposure on uh, some of these old photographs. Uh, over time, you know, color fades and uh, changes. Academy's instructions um, states that the uh, Australian version of the 113 was painted forest green and uh, the American and the Korean versions were painted olive drab. I did some experimentation, especially with the mock-up, and I found that dark olive green uh, will be the best base color uh, for this model. Again, before I start applying the base color, the entire exterior of the model gets a, a light sanding with a fine grit sanding sponge. At this point, I also added a small detail that I would have missed otherwise. I'm very fortunate to um, have a veteran US Army um, mechanic assist me on this build and he pointed out that um, that the exhaust outlet uh, needs um, bolt holes that were usually um, left open 
and uh, this was easy to add with uh, a uh, small drill bit. It's always good guys to um, have as many references as possible but do speak to the veterans if you can find them they're an excellent source of uh, information. The colors I chose for this project are from AK from the Real Colors series they are lacquer paints I'm a huge fan of these, uh, these paints because they can be really thinned down for airbrush work and they also go on super smooth and especially in this case where I'll be layering uh, different coats uh, to achieve the, uh, the, the final result. Something also to keep in mind is to use uh, the manufacturer's prescribed uh, thinner for this. In this case I'm using the AK Real Colors uh, Lacquer Thinner and uh, this just helps to uh, get the maximum performance out of the paint. I'm now switching to my uh, Supernova Studio Ninja airbrush. This is uh, just for general coverage and uh, this is a job that this airbrush excels at. I first started applying uh, the paint to the, uh, the loose components, the road wheels as well as some of the hatch covers. The trick to this is not to apply the, uh, the paint too thick. You want the pre-shading to still be visible through the base coat. The best way of doing this is to apply multiple coats. Apply them very thin and uh, gradually build up your, your paint. I now move on to uh, painting the hull and again I'm applying the paint gradually in multiple coats. Avoid laying down your uh, paint in one single go, that will most likely kill uh, the pre-shading. You'll also notice that uh, by this time I realized I'm working with lacquer paints and no longer acrylic paints and it's probably a good idea just to wear a set of gloves. Always keep uh, safety in mind. Again, don't uh, forget the rear ramp and uh, this needs to be painted as well. There you go guys, this is part 1 completed. 113 is now uh, painted with the, uh, the Olive Drab base coat. I'll be adding another color in the, in the next part, uh, a faded Olive Drab color just to all the highlight areas. But this is uh, certainly starting to look good, it's very close to the, uh, to the reference images. And uh, I'm now very well set up to uh, proceed with the rest of the paint and weathering process. Of course, there's still a lot of touching up to do, especially around the, uh, the hatches, the, uh, the, the entry points. Uh, some of the interior color is still visible, but we'll be touching that up before uh, moving on. Please join me in part two, uh, in which we'll be uh, continuing the paint and the weathering process. There's always a list of all the products that I used available from your local hobby shop. If you'd like to uh, follow the progress on this build, do join me on Instagram. I uh, post regular updates there. Looking forward to seeing everyone in the next video.